after a brief introduction on relativistic quantum mechanics today we are going to start the first concept of this uh, relativistic quantum mechanics and this is actually known as clean gordon equation in fact uh, clean gordon equation was the first attempt to find a relativistic equation for uh, the elementary particles to deal with the problem of quantum mechanics uh, in fact uh, i have uh, divided this uh, lecture on clean gordon equation in two parts so actually uh, in this, this is actually the first part of the lecture on clean gordon equation where uh, apart from some of the important difficulties in deriving this clean gordon equation we will simply see uh, what is this clean gordon equation and how it can be derived but uh, in succession in the second part of the lecture which will come after this lecture or after this video you will find we will discuss actually in very detail uh, what were actually the important difficulties uh, after the advent of this uh, clean gordon equation or in other words you can say uh, what difficulties this clean gordon equation faced uh, when it was in, uh, invented and how it was reconciled in fact uh, you will see in the next lecture that uh, uh, this prob the problem which was faced after the advent of clean gordon equation by this equation uh, that was removed uh, after when the field theory was uh, developed and then uh, after the advent of field theory it was found that this clean gordon equation is actually a classical a uh, wave equation for the particle and uh, it is applicable uh, to describe the state of a particle which has no spin or which has zero spin okay but uh, these things we will see in the subsequent next lecture on this clean gordon equation in as i have told you that in this lecture our aim is only to find uh, what will be the covariant form of the uh, <coughs> wave equation or the quantum mechanical wave equation for particle okay so in fact uh, starting with the schrodinger equation or you can say the quantum mechanical wave equation we will arrive at a result uh, which is called clean gordon equation so what are the different mathematical steps how we can get this equation we will see in this lecture okay you know uh, you have uh, studied in very detail in the previous lectures on quantum mechanics that uh, what is the quantum mechanical wave equation you know the quantum mechanical wave equation in general is given like this this is h hat psi rt equal to e hat psi rt here actually you know this psi of rt is the wave function or the eigen function or you may also call it eigen vector okay h hat is the hamiltonian operator and this e hat is the energy operator okay you also call it the hamiltonian and energy okay now uh, when uh, you will substitute the expression for this uh, uh, hamiltonian in uh, non relativistic form then you get the schrodinger equation for a free particle uh, in non relativistic form and uh, you know this uh, hamiltonian for a free particle is defined like this this is h equal to p square over 2n p you know this is linear momentum of the particle and when you will write this expression h equal to p square by 2m in operator form you simply write h hat equal to p hat square over 2m but as you know that the momentum operator that is this uh, p hat you can say this is equal to minus i h bar del or uh, h over i del this is uh, the momentum operator and when you will find the square of this momentum operator that is p hat square 
that will be equal to simply you can see this is minus h bar square del square you have only to square this okay so instead of this p hat square we will put here minus h bar square del square okay and divided by 2m so this non relativistic hamiltonian operator h hat is defined like this this is minus h bar square del square over 2m and this del square you know this is laplacian and uh, you also know that the energy operator e hat is defined like this this is i h bar del del t so when we will substitute these two operators that is h hat and e hat in this uh, uh, quantum mechanical wave equation that is in equation 1 then you get actually the schrodinger's time dependent equation okay and that equation will be what you can see uh, let us substitute the operator h hat and e hat from these results and you will get that equation so uh, this equation you may say is like this this is minus h bar square over 2m del square psi of rt equal to i h bar del psi of rt del t okay now as uh, you have seen in the introductory lecture or in, uh, in the previous uh, video that this equation is not in covariant form it is not a Lorentz covariant because in this equation the time derivative is of first order here you can see this is del del t psi of rt okay but the space derivative that is del square psi of rt this del square is actually the second order space uh, partial differential space operator and so uh, these two operators are non-symmetric and uh, as this is a essential requirement of the special relativity that any equation will be a Lorentz invariant only when the space and time derivatives will be of the same order because in the four dimensional Minoski space time and space are uh, placed on the same footing and uh, so if uh, the equation contains time derivative of first order and space derivative of second order it means uh, time and space are not on the same footing and so we can easily say that this equation will be not covariant under Lorentz transformation and these things we have discussed in the introductory lecture so definitely you can say that this equation number two is not a Lorentz invariant or it is not in the covariant form but our aim is to write down this equation in covariant form and for this uh, we use the four dimensional space which is called actually Minoski space and you have learnt in uh, my previous lectures on four vectors if you have not watched the videos of, of my videos on the four vector uh, you should watch it on the, in the class in the <coughs> playlist of uh, special relativity of my channel you can watch and you will see that uh, the Lorentz transformation is defined by this transformation equation here x prime mu this actually represents the four coordinates of the uh, of an event in s prime frame and this x nu represents the four coordinates of the same event in s frame and uh, if you want to transform these coordinates x nu into the s prime frame that is x prime mu you have to operate a transformation matrix a mu nu on this uh, on these coordinates x nu actually here these uh, um, mu and nu have are equal to 1 2 3 and 4 so actually this equation 3 in accordance with the einstein's uh, um, <coughs> einstein's summation convention represents actually the four equations okay and this transformation matrix you have learnt in uh, in my lecture on uh, a special relativity on four vector this is a, a transformation matrix and it is equal to 
uh, this much you can see this is a 4 by 4 matrix and it is gamma 0 0 i beta gamma 0 1 0 0 0 0 1 0 and minus i beta 0 0 gamma you know here actually this uh, beta is equal to what this beta is defined by v over c and gamma is defined by 1 over root over 1 minus beta square and actually it is called Lorentz factor. So uh, by using this transformation equation you can find the coordinates of any event uh, in a reference frame uh, when you know the same event in another reference frame. Okay. Now if uh, you want to write the covariant form or the Lorentz invariant form of equation 2, what we will do, you can see it here. In fact, in Minoski's four-dimensional space, that equation 2 can be written like this. This is minus h bar square over 2m g mu nu uh, del del x mu del del x nu psi of x alpha equal to i h bar del del t here there was del del t but you know the fourth coordinate in uh, the four dimensional space is x is denoted by x4 and it is equal to i c t so t will be equal to what this t is equal to x4 uh, divided by i c so instead of here uh, uh, instead of t here we can put x4 over ic ic is a constant factor so it will be in the numerator now and i square will be equal to minus 1 and that will be actually minus h bar c del del x4 psi of x alpha now let us understood how i have written this equation in fact this first of all see this uh, quantity g mu nu this is just a tensor this is called matrix tensor and you have not an idea of matrix tensor you can watch my video uh, in the playlist of mathematical physics where i have discussed this matrix tensor in very detail okay actually this matrix tensor is equal to one if mu is equal to nu it means uh, you can say that uh, g11 one one, g 2 2 g 3 3 and g 4 4 this will be equal to 1 but whenever uh, you take let us say g 1 2 or g 2 3 and so on you will see that this will be equal to 0 so in fact this matrix tensor is used here but uh, the value of this matrix tensor here will be equal to 1 because in this condition definitely we have to take uh, nu equal to mu okay and then this del x del del x mu and del del x nu both will become del del x mu at del del x mu and actually this is just equivalent to del square this is equivalent to del square okay here actually the value of mu will run from 1 to 3 not 1 to 4 for fourth component in rhs we use x4 okay so that equals and this function psi here uh, is a function of x alpha but x alpha is actually a four vector that is four position vector or four radius vector you can say and this is actually a function of x1 x2 x3 and x4 actually it is a scalar function okay so i hope you have understand how i have written the schrodinger's equation in the covariant form or you can say uh, in the uh, in in case of the minoski four dimensional space okay but our aim was to rewrite uh, this equation in covariant form but can you say that this equation is a lorentz covariant definitely not 
this equation is not uh, a, a Lorentz invariant because the problem is same. You can say that uh, in RHS, the time derivative is even now of first order. But the space derivative in LHS, you can see this is of second order. So definitely, although this equation will transform linearly, this equation will transform linearly. But whenever you will transform this equation from one reference frame to another, then it will not remain invariant. Its form will change because reason is same. The space coordinate and the time coordinate are here independent. Okay. But uh, in uh, Minoski's four-dimensional geometry or in case of the idea of four space or the four-dimensional space, you know time and space cannot be think separately from one another. So this equation is even now not Lorentz covariant. Okay. But finally, we will try to uh, find the covariant form of this equation. You can think why even after uh, making this transformation, this equation is not a Lorentz covariant because the reason is obvious. The reason is that when you have written this equation, you have not changed the Hamiltonian. You have, uh, in fact, in this equation 4, we have used the non-relativistic form of Hamiltonian. And that's why you can say that even after this change, this equation is not a, a, is not invariant or covariant under Lorentz transformation. The reason is what? The reason is that the Hamiltonian used in this expression or in this equation is non-relativistic. So if the Hamiltonian is non-relativistic, how the equation will be relativistic? Okay. Now, uh, for getting a read of this problem, we will try to use the relativistic expression of uh, Hamiltonian. You know that uh, in uh, a special relativity, you know the expression for the total energy is given like this. This is E square equal to P square C square plus M square C4. This is famous Einstein's energy momentum relation okay and so you can say that this e is equal to a square root of p square c square plus m square c4 here i have uh, uh, written the symbol for rest mass by m so don't confuse that this m is relativistic mass this is actually this m is actually the rest mass but i have used the symbol m instead of m naught for convenience but uh, equivalently you can write m naught instead of m okay so when this uh, relativistic hamiltonian h is defined by this equation you can write the equivalent operator associated with this hamiltonian so operator associated with this hamiltonian which is denoted by the symbol h hat can be written like this this is a square root of p hat a square c a square plus m a square c4 because you know in any classical formula any classical formula uh, if our aim is to write the formula in the form in operator form we simply uh, replace the observables by the corresponding operator. In this uh, equation in RHS, only P is the observable. You know, in quantum mechanics, mass and time are not observables. And C is a universal constant. So, only when you will change this P by P hat, that is P hat is the corresponding operator of the linear momentum, then you will get the Hamiltonian operator. So, Hamiltonian operator in a relativistic form is given by this expression h hat equal to a square root of p hat square c square plus m square c4. Okay.
Now, as you have learnt just now that this p hat operators square is equal to minus h bar square del square. So, we will substitute here instead of this p hat square a minus h bar square del square. So, Hamiltonian operator h hat is given like this. See, square root of minus h bar square c square del square plus m square c4. Now, this expression of the relativistic Hamiltonian we will substitute in the Schrodinger equation and then you can think that we will get a relativistic wave equation. Okay. Now, you know that uh, Schrodinger's time dependent equation is what? This is h hat psi of rt equal to i h bar del psi by del t or you can say psi of rt. Okay. Now, we have defined this uh, Hamiltonian operator here. So, let us substitute the Hamiltonian operator which is relativistic form of Hamiltonian operator in this expression and your equation will be minus h bar square c square del square plus m square c4 whole to the power half operated on this psi of rt and this is equal to i h bar del psi of rt by del t. Okay. And uh, if you want to write again this equation in case of the four dimensional space or in four vector form, you can write this equation in this manner. This is minus h bar square c square g mu nu del del x mu del del x nu plus m square c4 whole to the power half psi of x alpha equal to. Now, Again, we will change this t by x4 by ICT. I have already explained it. t is equal to what? This is x4. This is fourth coordinate by IC because x4 is equal to ICT. You know? And so, making uh, this substitution for t that is x4 by IC, the RHS of this equation will now become uh, this. This is minus h bar c del psi of x alpha by del x4 okay del x4 you should write this 4 just as a subscript here this is just del x4 okay this is in the form of uh, what in the form of four dimensional space okay but uh, you can see this equation which we have written in this equation number 5 you can say or in equation 5a or 5b this equation is not reasonable this is completely unphysical how you can say that this equation is unphysical you can see this uh, actually this equation contains a square root of a linear operator. You can see this minus h bar square c square del square plus m square c4. What is this? This is a linear operator. And in this equation, uh, you can see there is a square root of the linear operator. You know, we cannot define the square root of a linear operator. It, is, it cannot be defined. So, uh, due to uh, as the equation contains a square root of a linear operator, so we simply say that this equation is unphysical. Uh, some people will can say that uh, we will expand this uh, term that is minus h bar square c square del square plus m square c4 whole to the power half in power series. You can expand it. Okay, But when we will expand this in power series, you can think that uh, the expression or that series will contain different powers of the operator del square and del square. And uh, so definitely the 
time derivative and the space derivative will be not symmetrical because this del uh, uh, square operator will have different powers when we will expand this in power series okay and uh, time operator is fixed this is of first order okay so definitely you can say that uh, this equation will be not symmetrical in uh, for the space operator and the time operator not symmetrical that will become unsymmetrical and if the space and time derivatives are not of same order they are asymmetrical definitely the equation will be not covariant under the lorentz transformation okay there is another some there is some another problem too when you will expand the lhs of this equation that is the square root of this linear operator in power series you know there will be several terms in the lhs and as the lhs will contain a large number of terms the solution will become very tedious or we can say that the solution will become impossible so you cannot expand this in power series or simply you can say as the square root of a linear operator is not defined but this equation contains the square root of a linear operator so definitely this equation is not a suitable equation not a valid equation for valid wave equation in relativistic form i think you have understand what uh, uh, the idea is behind this actually all these things i have mentioned it here i am just giving a reading for your clarification you can see this equation is unphysical as we cannot define the square root of a linear operator okay all these things i have already explained to get rid of it if we expand in power series the expansion will cause the space and time derivatives unsymmetrical okay unsymmetrical form and so that the covariant formulation is not possible because you know the equation will be covariant only when the space and time derivative will be symmetrical if the space derivative if the time derivative is of first order the space derivative should be also of first order but that problem uh, problem has been not solved here okay so definitely this will be not a covariant form of this equation okay moreover the lhs uh, will contain large number of terms involving various powers of the operator del and so the solution becomes very difficult okay so finally you can say that this equation which we have just obtained is still lacks the covariance under lorentz transformation okay and uh, if our aim is to get this equation in such a form that it will be a lorentz uh, invariant or covariant under lorentz transformation definitely this equation needs some modification so how this equation will be modified so that this equation will become covariant or invariant under lorentz transformation now this is our basic problem actually this problem was solved by clean and gordon clean gordon solved this problem he carried out the calculations made the calculations how we can make this equation lorentz covariance okay and for this uh, he uh, just uh, operated the hamiltonian operator on the uh, basic uh, schrodinger equation or the wave mechanical equation you can see you know that uh, the basic equation or the schrodinger equation or the wave mechanical equation is what this is h hat psi equal to i h bar del psi by del t clean and gordon operated the operator h hat that is hamiltonian operator on this equation so let us operate this hamiltonian operator on this equation when you will operate h hat on the on a lhs that is h hat psi so h hat operated on h hat psi 
दिस विल बी सिंपली इक्वल टू एच हैट स्क्वायर साइन सो आफ्टर दिस ऑपरेशन द एल एच एस बिकम्स एच हैट स्क्वायर साइन ओके नो इन आर एच एस यू कैन सी द फैक्टर इज आई एच बार डेल साइड डेल टी नो ऑपरेट दिस एच हैट ऑन दिस आई एच बार डेल साइड बाई डेल टी नो इन फैक्ट द इंटरचेंज ऑफ द ऑपरेटर्स एच हैट एंड डेल डेल टी इज परमिटेड इट्स एक्सचेंज इज परमिटेड सो एज इन दिस इक्वेशन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी हैव टू डिफरेंशिएट साय विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू टी एंड देन वी विल ऑपरेट दैमिल्टोनियन बट इफ यू कैरी दिस प्रोसेस इन जस्ट रिवर्स मैनर इट मीन्स इफ यू ऑपरेट द हेमिल्टोनियन फर्स्ट ऑन साय एंड आफ्टर दैट यू डिफरेंशिएट इट विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू टी द रिजल्ट रिमेन्स सेम सो इन दिस वे वी सिंपली से that the operation of h hat operator and del del t operator may be interchanged its exchange is permitted so you can see since i h bar is a constant factor it has been taken outside of the operator now h hat has been operated first on this side and then the operator del del t this is just an interchange of the operators del del t and h hat okay but as uh, you can see this h hat psi is equal to this much this is i h bar del psi by del t so in instead of this h hat psi i have uh, substituted here i h bar del psi by del t okay now when this operator del del t be, will be operated on it this i h bar is a constant factor it will be outside and it will be multiplied with i h bar and that will be minus h bar square because i square is minus 1 and del del t operated on del psi by del t that will become del 2 psi by del t square so you can see that this hamiltonian square operator is equal to minus h bar square del 2 psi by del t square now you have seen that this hamiltonian operator in relativistic form is given by a square root of p hat a square c a square plus m a square c4 to the power half so when you will square it this a square root will cancel out and so h hat a square is simply equal to p hat a square c a square plus m a square c4 now again substitute the meaning of this p hat a square you know p hat a square operator is equal to minus h bar a square del a square so this first term will be minus h bar a square c a square del a square and the second term remains at each this is m a square c4 so now in this equation number 6 in its lhs where there is h hat square we will put this expression for the h hat square that is minus h hat h bar square c square del square plus m square c4 okay okay sorry here there will be actually psi 2 because psi is on psi this h hat square is operated okay now uh, substitute this value of the operator and uh, you can see this is at the place of what h hat square and psi is at is and in rhs there is minus h bar square del 2 psi by del t square now you can take this uh, constant factor minus h bar square c square as a common factor okay so when you will take it outside of the bracket the terms inside the bracket will be del square minus m square c square over h bar square operated on psi and this is equal to minus h bar square del 2 psi by del t square okay now uh, here uh, we have substituted that this k is equal to mc over h bar mc over h bar so in instead of this m square c square over h bar square uh, i have written here k square okay 
and now this minus h bar square and this minus h bar square will cancel out and your result is del square minus k squares operated on psi is equal to 1 over c square del 2 psi by del t square. Now let us bring this term in RHS into LHS. So the result will become del square minus 1 over c square del 2 by del t square minus k square psi equal to 0. Okay. Now this operator del square minus 1 over c square del 2 by del t square this is actually called d Lambertian operator or box operator. In some of the books uh, in quantum mechanics instead of this symbol box square you also find the symbol box. So uh, if you write uh, uh, only this symbol box instead of this box square the result will be valid uh, it is not any mistake but I have used here box square just for a convenience okay. So instead of del square minus 1 over c square del 2 by del t square uh, we have uh, used the del inversion operator box square so our equation is now uh, this box operator minus k square psi equal to 0. Okay. Now you can see in this equation actually this del square is the space operator and it is of second order and del 2 by del t square is also a second order time derivative operator. So in this equation actually the space derivative and the time derivative are completely symmetrical both are of second order and if both of these are of second order you can think that this equation will be covariant under Lorentz transformation yes or no since a space derivative when you write uh, del square what does it mean del square means del 2 by del x square plus del 2 by del y square and plus del 2 by del z square. So you can say that this del square that is Laplacian is a second order partial derivative operator in a space and del 2 by del t square is a second order uh, time derivative operator. Since both are of same order, so you can say that the space derivative and the time derivative in this resulting equation is of same order. So definitely this equation will be a Lorentz covariant. And this is actually the covariant form of the wave equation. Okay. And this very equation is actually known as clean Gordon equation. This equation which I have defined here, this is called clean Gordon equation. In fact, uh, in four dimensional formulation, you can write this uh, DL inversion operator by this expression. This is G mu nu del x mu by del del x mu times del del x nu. In fact, uh, when uh, this mu is equal to nu, then uh, you know this metric tensor is equal to 1. And this expression will be then simply del del x mu del del x mu. This is also written like this. This is del mu del mu. Actually this del mu is equivalently written for del del x mu. You may use this symbol. Okay. So in this form you can write this equation which is called clean Gordon equation like this. This is g mu nu del del x mu del del x nu minus k square psi of x alpha equal to 0. Or as this metric tensor is actually equal to 1. So when we will replace this nu by mu then you can write this same equation in this manner. This is in fact, the clean Gordon equation written 
in the four dimensional Minorsky J space in terms of the position for vector. Okay, position for vector. So, this is uh, just the derivation of the clean Gordon equation, uh, but you have seen some of the important facts while this uh, while deriving this equation, and uh, you can now say that as the space and time coordinate are not separated, uh, they are actually in continuum or both of the time derivative and space derivative are of same order. So, definitely uh, this equation will be covariant under Lorentz transformation. And so, this form of equation is also called covariant form of uh, clean Gordon equation. Okay? This is just derivation. But as I have told you that when this uh, equation was derived by Klein and Gordon, this equation faced actually several difficulties. But all those difficulties I will discuss in very detail in the forthcoming lecture because when I will try to discuss those things in this lecture, the lecture will be very lengthy and that will be uh, not uh, convenient for you. So, in the next part of this lecture, I will give you the all the informations, all the concepts regarding the difficulties with this clean Gordon equation and how those difficulties, difficulties were reconciled after the advent of the uh, field theory, you will also see. Then you will see that actually this clean Gordon equation is applicable uh, only in for the spinless particle, when the field quanta will be spinless, then this equation will be a valid field equation. Okay? In fact, there are several difficulties with it. Uh, uh, <coughs> in the, uh, when we will discuss in the next lecture, we will see that in the uh, according to this equation, there will be an occurrence of a non-physical negative energy contribution to the solution of this equation. We will also see that uh, the probability density uh, which will be constructed by this clean gordon equation will be in fact uh, negative. Okay? Uh, we will also see that the state function, in fact uh, this psi is not a, a valid state function you will see later on in the next lecture this state function psi does not preserve its uh, normalization in the course of time development. You will see all these difficulties uh, in the forthcoming lecture. And that is why when this uh, equation was proposed by Klein and Gordon uh, in the first phase of history of quantum mechanics, this equation uh, fell into disgrace and it was uh, discarded for a uh, period. But uh, after the advent of field theory, as I have told you, that this equation was again accepted as a field equation for the spinless particle. But all these things which I have told you will be discussed in very detail in just my another video in succession of this video. Okay? Thank you very much.